Y'all don't, y'all don't understand. You just don't understand the heart and the passion that these guys have to get the word. To have these elders and just to have a church that's doing the swapping and the sewing class and workouts and just all the fellowships and all that we do here. How wonderful it is. And I, I was telling them, you know, it's just so fragile. It's so, uh, I don't want to think about it too hard because it's hard to, because we can't brag on it. We can't, it, I can't take credit for it. Like, it's not a man's doing. It's God's doing, because men have tried to do stuff. It's not man's doing, Elder. So I told him, you know, it reminds me of this movie, one of my favorite movies of all time, Gladiator. Gladiator will preach from beginning to end. Oh, man, there's an anointing or something. I don't know what it is. But that movie will preach. And I remember when Marcus Aurelius, who these were real guys in history. He was a real Caesar, but Marcus Aurelius was talking to Maximus. And he told him, he said, I want you to be the savior of Rome. I want you to take over when I'm gone. And Maximus said, you know, I can't do it. You know, he said, and that's the reason you have to do it. Because your attitude, you, you say you can't. And I need a person that will have that attitude. But that's not the good part. He said, there was a vision that was wrong. He said, but it was so fragile that you could only whisper it. And he said, come Maximus, let us whisper together. And me and Ed was talking last night and we were talking about how wonderful things were, whatever it is, and shh. He said, let's whisper. Because it's, it's not our doing. So we can't get loud and brag. It's not our, it's God's doing. This is God's doing. Because we trusted him to do it. He did it. Some of y'all prayed for years for a place to be with your children and your family. And he did it. God did it. Ooh, I didn't mean to go there at all, but I guess I needed to remind you of where you are and what you have. Amen. Only God can do it. Amen? Amen? Amen. Folks in here prospering and God is taking you to just high levels, doing things, whatever it is. Blessing your family because you're paying attention. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm excited. I'm excited. I mean, through a whole pandemic, we were coming in here. They told us that whatever was out there was killing folks. And we came in here and worshiped the Lord in faith, believing that whatever it is, God, you can deliver us from it. I wasn't worried about catching it because I knew my God could deliver me from it. I mean, either we serving a mighty God or we just making stuff up. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, anyway, I have to get all that out because I just, that's how I feel. I'm thankful. Amen. AdamantBeliever.com forward slash Godly Heritage. Godly Heritage. And you know God's heritage is not skin color. Amen. You undercover Hebrew Israelites in here. You living a lie. And you know you living a lie. That's why you undercover. If it was the real deal and it was truth, you wouldn't be trying to hide it in here to infiltrate. Make your move. You wouldn't be thinking like that if you really believed it. How would you be in a place that don't ascribe to it? No, God's heritage is not skin color because that's an insult to him. He made all people. He made all 
all people, how you gonna tell him which people he's elected? He made all skin colors. And in his tribe, there were all skin colors. And he liked mixing it up every now and then. Amen. Rachel had, was it Rachel? Yeah, Rachel had a, no, who, who had Jacob and Esau? Right, yeah. She had a light-skinned redhead and a dark-skinned dude. And they were twins. Out of one woman, she gave birth to two different nations. One woman. And Esau's lineage wasn't cursed because of his red hair and his freckles. Amen. I got freckles. That's not why he was cursed. He was cursed because he sold his birthright. His attitude was bad from jump. But in Jacob's encounter with the Lord, he was repentant. And he wouldn't let the angel go until he got the blessing. Yeah, changed his whole name and blessed him. And that's you. Some of y'all came up in families with hoods and hoodlums, hookers and whores, pimps and prostitutes. They're all in your family. But your lineage is different. Your name has been changed because you trusted in the most high. You gave him permission to change your heart and you welcomed him in. And if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. You are rewriting history. It's not going to be the same outcome. God's plan for you is different. So things are going to be different. You can be in the same house under the same foolishness and make a better choice to do it God's way and God's light will shine on you change history change your children birth a godly heritage in you amen look at somebody and say godly heritage adamantbeliever.com forward slash godlyheritage.pdf so Israel acting up God, uh, God's people and so God tells them I'm going to put you in captivity of Babylon and you're going to be there and y'all are going to be in bondage slaves to the kings of Babylon the wicked worldly kings so the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah to tell them to build houses and dwell in them. Jeremiah 29 and 5. Build ye houses and dwell in them and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. When you get there in Babylon, this is what you do. This is how you behave. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters and take wives for your sons. That's the way they did it in the Bible. You didn't get to look the girl up and down and say whether or not you are attracted to her. You know, that's from our sinful, lustful society that gives you a, 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 a eye test and check. She's got to look like what you've been looking like on, looking at on the internet. Yeah, on them Instagram pages and YouTube channels and the women you've been looking at and lusting after and having visions of. So you judging what you want to marry like that and ain't nobody you looking at marriage material. <laughs> oh, I, oh, oh. I will preach that ain't marriage material. That's a good look on the internet. A good wink. Good lust build up in your heart for a few minutes. Yeah, that's a short relationship. It don't last long. That ain't the one you wife. 
Amen. And a girl that'll get on there and do that ain't wife material. That's what you're in love with. So that's what's messing up your... Well, that's why you can't find nobody. Back in this day, the daddy would go out and just come home with somebody. Here she is. Now get in there and have some kids. He said, take wives for your sons. He meant that. Go get them. Throw them in there with them. And then take your daughters. Girl, come here. Because <laughs> you costing too much money. Here you go. Give your daughter to husbands. You've been in the house too long. It's time to go. That they may bear sons and daughters. That ye may be what? Increase there and not diminish. So what is God doing? God is saying, even though you're in bondage, even though you're in trouble, you are still my people. So I need you to preserve the heritage so that when you come out of this, you'll have numbers. Because Jesus got to come out of this lineage. Because God had already said it. So you in trouble, but you still chosen. Anybody ever been in trouble, but you know you chosen? Still. <laughs> Look at all these folk in here. Yeah, you've been in trouble since you've been saved. Don't you do that. Oh, no, not since I gave my life to the Lord. It's just been... Howdy, howdy, and never goodbye. <laughs> no, it's been goodbye. <laughs> Amen. But for him, the peace. No, he said, and seek the peace of the city, whither I have caused you to be carried away captives. What? Wait, what? I had you carried away captives in bondage. But in bondage, I don't need you to protest. I don't need you to fight the power. <laughs> Can't say that too many times. That, that beat started coming in your head. <laughs> Lord, forgive me, God. <laughs> Sorry if I took you too far back. It's a stronghold on that beat. <laughs> But he, he didn't tell him, fight the power, go against the authority and turn Babylon upside down. No. He said, seek the peace of the city. We're in bondage. Seek the peace. Because God is the ultimate peacemaker. If you seek the peace. He said, and pray unto the Lord for it. Pray for what? Peace. In other words, keep your relationship with me and I'll see you through this. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you. Oh, he's speaking that in 20 and 22. Neither hearken to your dreams, which ye cause to be dreams. Got to be careful with dreams. Yeah, a lot of dreams are linked to how you feel. He said, uh-uh, I'm telling you what to do. So anyone, this is what he's really saying. Anyone that's saying anything outside of what I just told you in 2099, they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. So I'm giving you instruction. You listen to the prophet Jeremiah, because that's who's writing this. And anyone that objects is a liar. Because this is my plan. Other prophets were saying, no. 
don't go. We won't go. We're going to fight. We're going to do this and that. He said, no, I'm telling you, you're going. But when you're there, pray for peace. Yeah. And while you're praying for peace, take wives and sons and daughters and get your numbers up. Look at somebody and say, godly heritage. godly heritage. The sooner, oh, well, anyway, let me, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Babylon represents the sinful world, right? Mystery Babylon in Revelations is talking about a sinful world. They've been trying to resurrect Babylon since Babylon failed. The Bible says that it's unerectable. Is that a word? You know, I look right at Evelyn. It can't be. You can't rebuild it. He said, my punishment on it is going to be so strong, I'm going to kill it forever. Yeah, yeah. Babylon and Egypt, done. Because of what he, the Egyptians did to God's people, done. That's why it's ruins. Dusty ruins. Nobody sitting on no throne there. Babylon, ruins. When you mess with God's people, ruins. Hey. Oh, folks don't want to hear this message right here. Yeah. You better leave God's people alone. Yeah. But it represented the sinful world. God instructed his people to live among them, but not become like them. Kind of like on your job. Kind of like in your family. On, amen. amen. You got to live among them, but not become like them. Yeah. Romans 12 and 2 says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Meaning you can be in this world, but because your mind is renewed, you're not of this world. Yeah. Means that you can be in this world, but the world not be your home. You can be in this world, but the world not be in you. He told them to multiply by building families to further their godly heritage. This was a way to preserve who they were and pass down all that God had done for them to their children. Psalms 127 and 3. Lo, children are a her an heritage of who? The Lord. the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is what? His reward. Don't have children if you aren't going to prioritize them. The problem with our society now is people had children before they were secure. So they spend all their time trying to better themselves and don't have the time to invest in God's heritage. You don't keep the heritage. You pass the heritage on to your children. Most of the churches you go to now, young people aren't in them. Because they were so busy jockeying for positions, worrying about where they were ranked in society and in the church or the denomination. That they forgot to pass on the godly heritage. They forgot to preserve the youth. They let the life of the ministry walk out the door. It's the life and the future. So now their churches are dead. Yeah. Sit around. Social distance. Masked up. Trying to sing to the Lord. Singing about what? He'll bring us through. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's great. He's a healer. Is he? Power in the name. I mean, what are you talking about? Because you're standing in conflict of what it is you should be singing and praising God for. You waiting on him to do it? Because my Bible said he's already done it. He was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes, what? We are healed. 
So you don't need to be putting it on and being scared of something. The Bible said I'm healed. And how can I pray for healing for anyone else if I'm afraid for my own life? I can't do nothing in that state but transfer fear if I'm exhibiting it. Can I tell the truth in here? Oh, YouTube ain't gonna like this. Look at somebody and say, I don't care. You know, they're gonna take my channel off one day. One day. When we reached 100,000 subscribers, I said, uh oh, it's almost over. Almost over. Well, you're just going to have to come here because I'm going to be in here preaching the truth. <laughs> Amen. I don't, you, I don't belong to no YouTube. Well, that's a luxury. I'm old school. I get a megaphone like my daddy. Be out in the street preaching. <laughs> Folk on the internet sold. Ratchet sometimes. Then you miss one week of preaching. 500 emails. Where the message? Where the message? Yeah, I'll be wanting to go old school. Where the offering? My notification bell ain't ring on you. Why you doing all that requested? I mean, just sitting back in the underwear, legs crossed on the couch. Didn't have to go nowhere. And I'm up here just sweating and yelling, getting hoarse, tired. What a message, boy. <laughs> they do that all day. My goodness. But he told them to multiply by building families to further their godly heritage. Amen? Amen. He wanted them to increase in the land. So at the end of their 70 year bondage, it was 70 years because God told his prophet Jeremiah it was 70. The other prophets were saying it wouldn't be that long. That's why you don't listen to them. Because God did not send them. Man, you better know who God sent. And there's only one way to know who God sent. Look at somebody say, fruit. fruit. By the fruit, you will know them. Anybody can slay folks in the spirit. I saw a little four-year-old toddler do that. Knock the pastor and his wife down. Or a pastor and her husband down. I don't know what it was. She was the one instructing everything. Little baby knocked him out. So I'm not, that don't, you know, the shock tea pack don't impress me. Most of that is you. You yielding to something. That's all it is. If I had a line right now, some of y'all would yield and fall out. Don't mean the Holy Ghost did it. Amen. The Holy Ghost want to knock you out in the middle of mess when you leave here. That's when the Holy Ghost want to knock you out. When you get on that phone and start gossiping about somebody and talking about the pastor and his wife, talking about the church and yaga, daga, 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 daga. Oh, oh. yeah, that's when the Holy Ghost want to work. You don't want him to move then. Shut up. Knock you unconscious and make you hit your head. You want to fall out in here where this carpeted, the air blowing in your eye. You got a good fall here. Know somebody going to catch you. Three armor bearers standing around. That's a comfortable. Oh! Yeah. Let you, you need to pass out in the domino shack. You trying to roll a six. You trying to slap the big six down. You know if you fall out in there, they're going to rob you blind. <laughs> While it, everything going to be gone. Car gone. Everything. <laughs> That's when you need to fall out. <laughs> fall out in the middle of that argument. 
you talking about divorce. You're going to let the demon spirit speak divorce in an argument? You're going to say that to the person God made you one with? Y'all going to be arguing and you're going to casually throw that word and let that demon enter into your house? Because once it enters in, it's, now it's there. And every time you start feeling away, you're thinking about it. Because you let that devil in your house. That's when you need to fall out. Maybe we need to get a... Mm, get a what? An ambulance? 911! I know I'm preaching in here. But he wanted them to increase in the land so that at the end of their 70 year bondage, they would once again fully populate their homeland. Jeremiah 30 and 3. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord. And I will cause them to what? Return to the land that I gave to their fathers and they shall what? Possess it. So you're going to be in bondage for just a little while. And then I'm going to send you back to the land that I promised you because God don't break promises. But I need y'all to increase your numbers when you're in bondage. So this is what you do when the devil is preaching the false gods, when they're in Babylon raising the false god statues, when they're doing all of these things to all these false gods, you know what y'all supposed to be doing? Making families. Uh-oh. Yeah. Why are you trying to be the bachelor of the year? I don't need no wife, you know. I, I just roll like, no, nah, man, you need to go. Have some kids to pass it down. Get you a wife. Get you a husband. Look at somebody, okay. No, you can't just go get you a husband. Because you be trying to twist my words. Now. Pastor said, get the husband. So when we leave here, I'm going to the salt grass. And <laughs> I will be on the lookout. <laughs> I'm on matchmeat.com right now while I'm sitting in the service. Match meat. The Christian one. Christian match meat. You know, I'm just gonna, we just gonna roll the dice. Can I keep preaching in here? Yeah. So in there, he told them, I'm gonna send you back to your homeland when we get done with this. God desired for them to establish a godly lineage. This requires, listen to me people, this requires self-sacrifice and a commitment. Look at somebody say commitment. A commitment to provide children with a stable, non-toxic environment to be raised in. Can't be fighting in front of them. You can't be fighting in front of them. You can't be getting them on your side during the fight. You can't wait for the husband to leave and then you getting the children on their side by telling the husband's business. I'm going to call it out. Y'all, I've been on witchcraft for a um. Yeah, can't do it. You can't get the kids on your side. You don't have a side. I don't care if you don't clap. I turn all these lights off and just have one on me. So I don't have to see none of you. But you got to create a stable and non-toxic environment to raise your children in. So you and the, you, you, y'all can't be beefing in front of the kids. Proverbs 22 and 6, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not. He will not depart from it. This means that this has a whole lot to do with what we're doing in front of our children. (laughs) 
Amen. Me and my wife don't agree all the time. And we've had disagreements that lasted a while. My kids don't know. You know about that, Landon? No, he don't know. Boy, we put on a show. We need, we need awards. <laughs> my mama did. Uh, you, you didn't know, do you? We don't do that in front of you, do we? No, we handle that in private. When we're in front of everybody else, we good. You know why? Because we, we do love each other. Now, we might can't stand each other, but that, that don't mean I don't love her. So if I love her, I'm going to be there. How am I going go to how you gonna go to work and you got a boss you can't stand and you going to act like you like him for a check and you can't be in the house in front of your chick? I know I'm preaching. I'm going to walk over here and get on the drums. I've done that before. Y'all remember that? <laughs> that was the stupidest Sunday ever. You remember that? <laughs> you remember that? I played a whole beat and everything. <laughs> Don't be looking at me. Funny! But you train up a child in the way they should go. You got to think about the, that. You're going to pass down God's heritage. But his heritage can't be worthless in your children's eyes. It's got to be fruitful. His heritage has to work on you first. You can't act a fool and cross your fingers and hope for the best. These are humans. Can I keep going? Babylon was a place that sacrificed their young to false gods. We know that, right? That's in one of my videos. They would offer up the newborns and pass them through the fire as the offering for their sexual sin. Set them on Molech, heat Molech's hands up and set the baby on his hands and burn the baby alive and then play music to drown out the baby's crying. Yeah, that's in one of my troop on hip hop song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy says there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or, the, or that uses divination or that reads their horoscope or an enchanter somebody's like wait a minute what yeah that's what an observer of times is you believe that your blessings or whatever's going to happen whatever you're going to manifest is on the schedule of the stars so you are Capricorn. <laughs> yeah. That's all witchcraft. <laughs> Take your sign off your page online. That's not what you are. That's cosmic magic. And it goes against God's plan for you. Because what God speaks about you through his scripture, you're ignoring. You're reading what, they, what the little scroll is telling you your day is going to be like. Can I just preach? I just, amen. Or using divination. You're not using witchcraft and going super saiyan and all that kind of stuff. You can't do that. Think you have powers and Getting in folks' heads and stuff. <laughs> Why are you looking like that? I will mess with your mind. <laughs> Divination. Or an enchanter or a witch. You can't be any of these things. He said, don't let it be found among you. But Babylon is where they sacrifice children. But the sad part was God's people was already doing this. They did it in the wilderness with Moses. They were doing it. They picked these habits up from the Egyptians. Well, after they left the wilderness, they began to do these things when they got into the land of Canaan. This is why they was in trouble in Babylon in the first place. It was sacrificing their children. 
What makes God so upset about him sacrificing the children is that's his heritage. Today, people are offering up their children to the same demonic gods by aborting them, neglecting and abandoning them, and or as well as giving them to mammon. So they're not sacrificing them to Moloch. They're sacrificing them to mammon, the god of money, by pushing them to strive for wealth and prominence. Oh, I'm preaching now. You got to make me look good. I done had a hard life and I made a lot of mistakes and everything. So I need you out there on the grind. You're going to have to be successful. You're going to have to be out there. You ain't told your daughter about being a wife at all. At all. You know, I talk to preachers and different ones, you know, because since I hooked Vicky up with Cam, you know, we just hooked that up like Zamunda. <laughs> so, you know, they be having daughters and they be like, hey, brother, you know, Landon, he's still, you know, <laughs> single. He's still, you know. I say, he ain't single, but he don't want your daughter. Because <laughs> you pushed your daughter to strive. He don't need to be, he, he ain't responsible for her debt that you got her into. You didn't have any plan at all for your daughter to be a wife. You taught her to not even like men. Taught her to strive. Like that's going to help your ministry. You crazy. You mess, folks are messing these kids up. They see marriage and family as an afterthought. That's the last thing on my goal list. Sending the daughter out of the house to a strange land to go to school? Out from under her spiritual covering? Not equipped with knowledge of who God truly is? She can't cover herself. They wonder why they well, well into their 30s and 40s with no family, striving. Hey, stop me when I'm lying. That's what I'm saying. You can look at it, society, and tell. Luke 17 and 2, it would be better for him if a milestone Millstone was hung around his neck and he would cast into the sea. Then he should cause one of these little ones to sin. Yeah. It would be better for some of these parents to tie a stone around their neck and throw it off a bridge yeah. than what they did to their kids. Making them strive instead of passing down the godly heritage of God. That's why it's so easy for the New World Order to manipulate this generation. Generation Z belongs to them. They don't know the heritage. Heritage wasn't important. Wasn't as important as making money. Wasn't as important as getting an education. Getting in debt. Setting yourself up. Can I preach it? This is what we do in here. God told them, do not listen to the prophets or dreamers in the midst of them because they were deceiving them. They were telling them that they should not build families in Babylon against Jeremiah's prophecy. Uh-oh, watch this. Jeremiah 29, 31. Send to all of them the captivity saying that Thus saith the Lord concerning Shemaiah, the Nehelamite, because that Shemaiah hath prophesied unto you, and I didn't send him. He called you to trust in a lie. That's what they're doing now. What are the preachers preaching now? Success. 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 They have more funerals than weddings. Success. They have more divorces than weddings. Success. 
The prophets are lying. They're preaching success so they can be successful. At your expense. They're not preaching for you to raise your daughters up to be wives. Raise your sons up to be husbands. So when you're in bondage, like we are now, you can't listen to the lying prophets. Because they're all about the cash. The prosperity doctrine. Yeah. Teaching the women to be just success, successful in society as men. That makes people look up to you and applaud you and approve of you. Make you overcome. Oh, what they said about you. Look what they said. Oh, you should have blew your brains out. They said you weren't going to be nothing, but look at you now. You're clocking that check. You getting paid. Look at you now. Why is he preaching that? Because that money's coming to him. Can I keep going? This was a plot by the devil to destroy their lineage that would produce Christ. The devil fought against them building families and establishing a godly heritage that would further the lineage of God. Jeremiah 30 and 19. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. God has plans for us, a heritage for us, but he don't want us to be few. We won't be small. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I choose to preach this, we are cult. <laughs> Instead of telling the women to go out, get in debt, get paid. And then lay up with some old jive sucker. And take care of him. I know I'm preaching. I don't care how you looking at me. I'm going to preach the truth in here. Everything is happening today. The devil is fighting hard to cause men to leave their homes. Every 10 emails I get a day says, my husband is leaving. He say he don't want to do this no more. How many kids you got? Five, six, seven. He don't want to do it. The devil is fighting hard to cause men to leave their homes, cause women to strive, and children to be born without what? Purpose. Purpose. To end the heritage of God in this generation. The devil is trying to erase us. Second Timothy 3 and 6. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive who? 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 Silly women. Silly women. Oh, I got this inflammatory comment on my sermon about order. This lady told me up. Oh, listen. You dogging out the women, talking against the women. But I will have you know that it ain't always the woman's fault. Some of these men are just no good. And women don't have a choice. They no good. I said, yeah, some of them may be no good. But I took it all the way back to the garden. So what I said predates what you said. In the garden, ain't nothing happened yet. (laughs) 
Adam couldn't have been no good if God said he was good. So, you know, but I didn't, I didn't respond. I didn't even respond. You know, I delete those comments. But that's what I was thinking. Yeah! And they're awesome jive dudes. That's jive everything. That's some jive pets. Yeah, that's some jive dudes. But I'm talking about the totality of it all. Because the scripture could have said, for these are the sort that creep into the houses and lead captive silly dudes. But it chose not to. It said what? Silly women. Because he know if he get the women, he can corrupt the children. That way he got the boy and the girl. And the husband. They're led away with divers' lust. What are these divers' lust? These are the things that their parents put in them. To be famous, to be large, to be a boss, to get paid. Not to be a wife. Not to be a mother. Ever learning. And what? Can I keep preaching? Man, this word is rich right here. This should have been a DVD. So many today are fighting against the church and pastors that teach the order of the home. These wicked men are pawns in Satan's scheme to end God's church and the heritage of God's people. 2 Timothy 3 and 8. Now as James and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also do what? They resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith. They're in the faith, but reprobate concerning the faith. Because you're going to try to put a societal spin on the word. You can't do that. You can't make the word work for you if you change it. You can't make the woman the head of the man. You can't change it. These were the Egyptians that supposedly, or you know, they say were the ones that did the magic against Moses. Made it look just like Moses is. When he threw the snake down, I mean threw the rod down, they threw their rods down. Their rods became snake. Looks just like it. But the difference was the fruit. What fruit? Their snakes became fruit of Moses' snake. When the order of the home is foiled, then the foundation of who we are is always a question. Oh, listen. When the order of the home is messed up, the foundation of who we are is always in question. So when the man is not the head and the leader and the wife is not the help meet, then the children will always question which one they should be. This causes our children to search for themselves and adhere to a foreign heritage that will give them a status and lineage to be proud of. You done went and dug up the fifth pharaoh of the dynasty of Egypt saying you look like him because he was your great, 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 great <laughs> uncle. My uncle was a king. Don't you know we kings and princes up in here? Really, flash the gold in. Where the gold at, bro? You should have a whole truck of it. Not just one medallion that ain't real. We kings, we, we queens. What's up, king? How you doing, king? But a lady called me that. I said, don't you call me no king. I 
just, you know, I'm just respecting because the lineage, the heritage is what I... Ain't you got five kids by five different men? Are you trying to start a heritage or a lineage? What are you doing? And not to fault people that have made mistakes. People have been out there, whatever the case. But trying to find a lineage and a heritage to adhere to to make you feel better about it is a waste of time. You can't, you can't get that Pharaoh to approve of you. He been gone. And everything he had is in ruins now. So he don't even have a kingly heritage to pass down to you. He failed. All the pharaohs failed. Got cursed by God and abolished. The black people. The black people. What, what color did you think the Egyptians? Boy, you didn't watch too much Ten Commandments. You looking at your brother trying to figure out that, wait a minute, he bald, but he's still white. No, the Egyptians were very dark. The darkest of the dark. They all got cursed, abolished, and wiped away because they enslaved God's people. Ain't no king sitting on no throne now. The Sphinx ain't got knuckles. They don't all ride it off. All the statue, everything is messed up because it's ruins. They can't handle it. Yeah, that's too much truth. They, you done went and tried to dig up a, so you can think, we, we, we the chosen. Don't you know who are we? And they, they come on my page. That's what they always ask. I hate that. That's the question they always ask, Jay Brian. You saw it. Who, but, but who are we, though? I don't know who you are. You an idiot. Leave me alone. But who are we? Like, where, where, I mean, who are we? Like, where, where are we from? Like, where does our tribe? But my tribe is Lewis. I, I point to them. There's one. There's one. There's what. There's one. That's my tribe. What are you talking about? I mean, which tribe in the Bible? Which one? Which... You trying to avoid the only heritage that means anything? That's the godly heritage. But you don't want the godly heritage because you gotta act right to have his heritage. You gotta take care of your children. You gotta love your husband. Love your wife. You got to build your home and be responsible. Claiming somebody been dead for 400 years. Yes, we are the Tutmans, Harriet. She just... The... <laughs> we, we have a rich heritage. We've seen the Tutmans. See, Tutmans is so all everybody here. They were either working railroads or they always running hiding somewhere. They good at hiding. Like if they hide, you can't find them ever. I be trying to whoop my kids. I be like, where's Jai? Where, where's Jonathan? He's just gone. He's here in the house. He's right there in front of you and hiding. Because he got that heritage that you stupid. The Tubmans. But our children begin to search for themselves and they look for a status and a lineage. Psalms 94 says, How long shall they utter and speak hard things? All the workers of iniquity boast themselves. But here's what they do. All of these folks that's in these crazy lineages and stuff, they break into pieces God's people and afflict God's heritage. You're entering in foolishness in what God is trying to establish. The ungodly heritage that they adopt does not change their behavior. Right? So they say they Hebrew while they smoking weed. We the, we the chosen ones. Chosen to smoke weed. Your lips look like an Egyptian. But that don't mean you the chosen <laughs> Yeah, but they 
ain't trying to be. <laughs> it don't change their ha- behavior. Just because you identify with a pharaoh. Oh, I'm the cousin of Agnaden. <laughs> Why you got a criminal record, bro? Don't change their behavior. So as long as the absence of God's morals continue, this is why we came to Christ to change our morals, right? We change our morals, which makes better choices and decisions so we can pass down the godly heritage, right? You can't let your kid keep seeing you smoking black and miles and talking about I'm going to quit one day. You smoking black and miles, they're going to go get something more powerful. You was just drinking California coolers. They still had those. You don't think so? <laughs> That's how long it's been since I did that. <laughs> but they, yeah, but they got cold duck. They got a one up you. <laughs> Wild turkey. Because what the. <laughs> Adults do in moderation, the children going to do in excess. So you got to get over your little habits, get delivered, repent, stop, quit. So as long as the absence of God's morals continue, they will be a dysfunctional people with no future. Still talking about Agnaton and what the Egyptians did. Romans 6 and 23, for the wages of sin is what? Death. Death. But the gift of God is what? Eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Summary! Boy, this was a message, wasn't it? God's heritage is not simply passed down by telling the stories of his many acts in the Bible or passing down the stories of the churches of old. That's not how you pass his heritage down. Well, see, your Uncle Willie started a church. And when he built that church, he built it. That's not God's heritage. That's the heritage of Willie. And I'm glad he did a good thing by building a church. But that's not the godly heritage. Or just even talking about Bible stories. You can do that with your kids all day long. But if you're not being a Bible story... <laughs> then how are they going to identify with what you're telling them? It is carried on by our behavior towards one another. This is how his heritage is passed down by our behavior towards one another. The light of Christ must shine through our deeds and not just our words. People can say they are of God, but do they treat people like they should? Folks can say they are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, and fire baptized. But can they stay married? And not divorce? I'm not preaching for hand clap, so that slow clap start, it don't bother me. Can they? Can they? For the kids' sake, can you put yourself to the side for the kids' sake? To give your children a chance you didn't have? Or are you that important to yourself that you got to go find happiness somewhere else and bust your family up? Holy Ghost field. Fire baptized. People can say they are blessed and highly favored. How you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. Oh, oh, oh. okay. Well, glad you're good. You got a whole song about it and everything. Well, people can say they're blessed and highly favored, but do they invest more time into social media than they do their own children? You spend more time telling everybody on social media how blessed and highly favored you are? While your children raise themselves? 
People can claim to be prophets, pastors, and great ones in the faith. But can they gather without social distancing and masks? How great. Wait a minute, bro. You got a robe on with tassels, awards, buttons, medals, medallions, Boy Scout <laughs> achievements. <laughs> Last time you achieved something. Boys, you got Boy Scout achievements. You got <laughs> Tenderfoot. You got <laughs> ropes, colored ropes. Bells. You can barely get around. You got so much gear on when you walk in church. You're that honorable. You the highest of the high prelate. Turn around, got a mask on. And you gonna talk through it. Yeah, after the preacher apprentice finished preaching, they got that disinfectant wand. Oh, Well, you just sprayed the Holy Ghost out of the place. What you, I'm trying to fix. Here's my thing. Did the Lord tell you to do that? Does he speak? Because you just preached. So I'm supposing if you preach, he speaks. Did he say anything? About your safety? Just do it one service at a time. Have a service, just one service at a time. Like, like uh, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. One day at a time. Let's do one service at a time. Let's have one service where we believe God for the healing of everybody in there. Just one service. Let's do that. We're going to have, y'all, this coming Sunday. That's what you announced. Them, not us. This coming Sunday is going to be step one. First service. And we're going to believe in this service that the God we've been preaching about for all these years, the God we've been saying was a healer, deliverer, that would set us free, protect us from the devil. The God that we said all this stuff for all these years, speaking in tongues, cast out the falling out, all that, that God we're going to believe this one Sunday that he can keep us safe. That same Holy Ghost that we yelled and screamed that he was a keeper. He's a keeper. He's a keeper. We're going to believe this Sunday that he's going to keep us. Can they lay hands on the sick even if the sick got COVID? Is COVID sick? You got COVID or you sick? Y'all pray for me. Do y'all be praying for me? Y'all better pray for me because I feel folk getting mad at this message. Our children need to see us consistent in the faith and practicing what we preach. Amen. This is the best part right here. But none of us are perfect. Anybody perfect? You make mistakes, you make error, you do stuff, you've done stuff you're ashamed of, whatever the case. That don't mean I can't whoop you. That don't disqualify me from being a parent. That's what the world wants everyone to think. Hey, you did stuff. Yep, and I'm finna do this to you. Bam, pow! Slash! When you edit this, Jonathan, you got to put them words up like Batman. Bow, bang, slap. <laughs> Don't do that. See, you got to do He was like, ah. None of us are perfect. And our children need to know that too. Oh, this is where the old church messed up. Now, I ain't me and my wife, we ain't arguing in front of our kid. But... They need to know we're not perfect. 
Nothing wrong with your children knowing you got flaws or errors or you, you was into some stuff back in the day. Whatever the case. That's their pathway to you. When they make a mistake, they don't want to feel like they have totally let you down and can't be the child that you want them to be. You have to extend hope to them by putting work you came out of out there for them. In order to tell the stories of the Bible and exemplify them, you have to be willing to show the adversity, failures, and victory that we all experience as believers. Who is all? Us and the people in the Bible. That's why God put all their flaws in the Bible for you to read. <laughs> this is the rich heritage of the saints of God that we must impart that must be imparted to this generation so that we can continue the faith that we have trusted in. We cannot fail our families in this hour. We cannot let our churches close and lose power in these last days. We must believe the word, live the word, and trust the word of God. will transform our children and keep God's heritage alive in the earth. Amen? Boy, this was a good message right here. <laughs> Jeremiah 3 and 18. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. And they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. But I said, how shall I put thee among the children and give thee, uh, give thee a pleasant land, a goodly heritage of the host of nations? And I said, thou shalt call me my father. And shalt not turn away from me. But surely as a wife treacherously departeth from her husband. So have ye dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. This is what we did. This is what we do. Leave him. Depart from him. A voice was heard upon the high places weeping and supplication of the children of Israel. For they have perverted their way. And have forgotten the Lord their God. They went after the false prophecies. They started thinking about themselves above the heritage. Didn't teach their families or their children to become families. Didn't teach them. Instead told them to strive so that they could look better. Messed up God's heritage. So he says, return ye backslidden children. And I will do what? This is the beauty of God. I will heal your black backslides. Everywhere you erred. Went after the world, he understands. You did that, you raised up the high places that weren't of God. All of these things, he said, but I will heal your backsliding. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord, our God. Everyone stand to your feet. So what we do as people of God, we repent. That's what we do because that's what Jesus did. He provided penance for us, paid the penalty of our sin so that we could repent. When the word of the Lord is preached and we see ourselves maybe striving, maybe not focused on family, husbands, wives, or focusing our children on that. Maybe not focusing on passing down the godly heritage. Maybe looking for things that the world can give us and trying to show our accomplishments. Whatever the case, we got to repent. Come out of the world and get back to what God told us to do. Listen, he wants us to build families. Right now, in this time. Because our influence is only as strong as our numbers in this time. So we need our children to see things done the right way. Amen? So if you need prayer for that, 
You want God's God, you want to be able to pass down God's godly heritage to your family? Just come on up. We're gonna pray for you. Maybe strive got in there somewhere, maybe thinking about what they're gonna do, their accomplishments, whatever the case, but let's get back to this. Let's get back to this. Let's get back to what's important. Let's get back to what God said. Let's get back to his command for us. Let's get back to what he wants for us. Let's get back to his plan. I know the prophets are online prophesying, telling you this, telling you that, store up tuna and water and this and that. But they're not saying, find husbands and pray for husbands for your daughters, wives for your husbands, have sons, daughters, and pass on God's heritage forward his heritage all the wonderful things he's done for you pass it on keep it going hallelujah anyone else this was a rich message very rich but I believe it's what God wants said I believe it's just what he wants said so we're going to believe him for it. Anyone else? Everyone bow your heads. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this word. We thank you, God, for your truth. We thank you, Lord, for shining the light of truth on our hearts today. God, we thank you for your prophecy, even to Jeremiah as he dealt with Babylon, which was a great worldly pagan society. And God, as we deal with our world today, which Babylon has spread all over, or the ideology of Babylon is all over our world, God. We pray right now that those instructions you gave him, that we can make them applicable to us. And Father God, we can do what needs to be done to forward your godly heritage. So we pray right now. Come on, lift your hands up. God, take strive out of our hearts. Take the opinion of society out of our hearts. Take what people are saying and, t and people's opinions and what they think of us and how they measure us by how much money we have and what job we have and how much we've, whatever we have, God, how, how men see things. Take that out of us, God, that we will not be man pleasers in this hour, that we will not look to the right or to the left to see what our neighbor is doing and begin to covet and desire that. Father God, take all of that out. Cleanse our eyesight. Father God, cleanse our heart. Take the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life out of us. Father God, take the spirit of the world out of us in the name of Jesus so we will not strive to be worldly pleasing in the world's sight but God that we will focus on what's important help us to make our children our priority help us father God to talk to our children develop strong relationships with them father God help our children to speak to us father God to, that they would that we would be approachable to them father God that they could share their innermost thoughts their issues whatever they're dealing with father God they don't have to get caught in anything but they'll share it with us because they trust us father God open the lines of communication between father and son between mother and daughter between husband and wife Father God let us speak with one another in love so that we can get what we need from each other Father God so we can forward your heritage through our homes through our bloodline through our generations through those that are ours through those that are ours they're our responsibility so help us Father God to push away the world's opinion and God, close our ears to false prophets. Close our ears to prophets of Baal. Close our ears to rejected pastors and preachers. Those that you have rejected. Father God, because of the malice in their hearts. Because of the hatred in their hearts. Or because of the world in their hearts. Where they're pushing people to strive. Father God, close our ears to false prophecies. And those, Father God, that will speak lies to deceive us and feel better about themselves in the name of Jesus and help us Father God help us Father God in this last hour 
to exemplify what your word says and forward your heritage to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, hug one another. Say, God's heritage is rich and I'm a partaker of it. Hallelujah. I'm a part of it. 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 Listen, listen, stop. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Everybody stop. The Holy Spirit just spoke to me. We need to pray, listen. And I don't mean to try to make preachers look bad, pastors to look bad, anywhere. I love, man, I, as I'm getting older, I'm learning how important pastors are. Uh, you know, I have men that, that I'm close to that are older that tell me stuff. They, you know, they talk straight to me and tell me, look, but you don't need to do this. You shouldn't say, you know, and I look to them for that. So I respect, I have a high respect for pastors. So I don't want any pastor to get the idea that I'm blasting them because they wearing masks or they, you know, social distancing of all that. But I want to pray right now for those pastors in those churches that they would just come along with the program. Let's bring the healer. Let's bring the Rosa Sharon to deliver. Let's bring him back. Let's put him back in his place. And let's get, let, let, let's just get over this stuff that's been going on. So everyone, come on, just bow your heads with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now, God, and I humbly pray. I humbly pray, God. I don't want to ever look like I'm talking down on anyone, God. That's not my heart ever. Father God, I respect the men of God that you've called. I respect the men that you've used, even the ones you've used down through the years to help me. Father God, to raise, to, to, to raise me in ministry and those, Father God, that are speaking into my life, even now, Father God, I thank you for that. I will never know all that they went through. I will never know what it takes for them to do what they do at their age in this time. So I don't want to ever, Father God, throw any kind of shade or make them look bad or anything. So we pray right now, Father, for these churches and these men. Father God, that may not have had courage in the past or may have bought into the pandemic or whatever the, whatever the reason is. But Father God, we pray right now for them, for strength in their churches, for courage in their churches. Father God, that their churches will begin to exercise faith in these areas, Lord God, and stand up where they need to stand up and believe in you as a healer. Trust you with their health. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray that you will take them on health journeys, God, so that they can even get some of the medications and things that they're on out of their system. Father God, that you will give them what they need in this hour to better themselves, have a better quality of life, and have faith and trust in you in this last hour. We pray in love, believe in it, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on and give God praise. You may go back to your seat, but hug somebody else and say, God's heritage is a part of me. I will pass it down. Not just in word, but in deed. I will pass it down in deed. Hallelujah. 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 In the name that is above every name. Y'all, we all just trying to make it. Anybody trying to make it? Anybody just trying to make it? So we need these messages to come, bust us up, help us make it. Amen. 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 You know, God was a looming authority over Israel. So they knew they always had to contend with God. Even though they would get off and stuff like that, that's God. So you better act right. And we need that. We need to be just like that. Amen? We need to think about that. When we about to do the fool or something, we need to think about, wait, now wait a minute. God. Amen? Oh, look, see. You know, TV done painted God, making him look all that. No, 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 no. No, nope, God will, no, 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 that's God. So we need to keep him happy, amen? Look at somebody and say, I want to keep God happy. Come on up. Hallelujah. 